So we've come to the synthesis essay, which is one of the final assignments that you'll have for this class. Particularly what this is, is that it's a research assignment where you're going to look for two articles that are used as solutions for a certain problem that you pick to solve in society. Particularly our class has dealt with food issues, right? Uh, so food scarcity, food deserts, COVID-19, and our diet, our diet and climate change. All these issues basically generate talk about what's called food justice. So making food accessible to all people, making food and healthy food accessible and our diets to change to help the earth, to help society become more equitable. All these kinds of issues are going for food justice, right? So this assignment, as I noted, is going to ask you to find some kind of issue, particularly to me one related to food. It could be one that we've covered already in class, or it could be something that you're interested in because it deals with your major or something that you're just interested in. You can choose so you can be as creative as you like. Then what you're gonna do, you're gonna look for two articles that are there to solve that issue. We're gonna talk how to do that, and basically that's what really the essay is gonna be about. So let me talk to you about the prompt, right? The prompt you can find in your week four folder, and it looks like this. I'll read it to you to explain what's going on. As I noted, right, we examined how certain communities are affected by their access to food or choices of diet. That's what we talked about this semester. So this final essay asks you to identify an issue related to food in Miami and propose a plan of action. Key point here, you need to figure out what's your issue, right? And then it has to be related to something of Miami. Uh, so if it's food deserts, are there food deserts in Miami? Well, I'm pretty sure we learned that, yes, that does exist here. So it's gotta deal with our location and then what you're gonna do ultimately is propose a plan of action to solve that issue. Now, you're gonna gather two credible sources. We talked about how to find our ethos, how to be credible, how to look credible, and then how to find credible sources. And then you're gonna offer that solution to the people of Miami to solve the issue. Notice how it says two strategies. So you're not just gonna find one issue, I'm sorry, one solution, but two strategies. So maybe two steps or maybe two ideas you think could solve that issue to promote food justice. Uh, now this little graphic here, you can use to uses like a little brainstorm it asks you or it tells you how can you help promote food justice so it says go to farmers markets reduce the food that you buy compost what you don't use reduce red meat consumption so that's linked to climate change plant or grow something like ron finley asked us to ask questions and speak up stop buying plastic and fruit con in plastic containers uh, so all those things you can use as jumping off points. Maybe you want to think, where could I go with that kind of idea? So brainstorming tips. These are just here for you to think about your topic. Particularly, you can look at the videos and articles we already covered in the semester and say, okay, well, I like talking about food deserts. Perhaps maybe there is an issue that there's a solution that I can find already and, and gear that towards Miami. Um, or maybe you don't want to do any of that. Maybe you look through the videos and articles and say, you know what, I don't really find that too appealing. I want to do something else. Well, you have this list here that I've given you. Food deserts we spoke about, COVID-19 and diet. Delve in there as much as you want. You can even expand this one and say COVID-19 diet and children, COVID-19 diet and Latinx populations. Food waste, right? So all the food that we waste from restaurants to grocery stores to our own homes, what happens to that food waste? How can we reduce that? Diet and climate change, health problems connected to food, so diabetes, heart disease, et cetera, et cetera. Farm workers' rights, the people that actually create and make our food, what about that? You can also think of the ethics behind humanely raising animals for food, eating animals, that could also be another uh, food-related issue that you want to look at. So you can really see how it's expansive. I want you to choose what you find most interesting. Remember that the audience for the essay are the people of Miami, or is the people of Miami, right? So again, if you find some kind of solution that works in Wisconsin, that's not saying it's the same as South Florida, Miami, you need to figure out how you can adapt it. And you also want to make sure that your solutions are accessible and affordable to various communities. Um, so don't just think that there's a magic bullet so solution for everything. You have to think about how would you adapt that one. And you'll do this within your essay. You're going to discern how would you change that solution to make it work in Miami. Now, the sources you want to do, find are two sources. You're going to analyze and evaluate them in your essay. We'll talk about that when we get to the body paragraphs. But pretty much what you want to do for your, for your sources, you want to make sure they're no less than five years old. If they're more than five years old, they won't count. They're not really current. They're not really in, in use right now. So you really want to look for something that's only five years old. Also, make sh I'm asking here 
please try and get articles that are from edu.org or gov sites because those are the most reliable and most credible. If you need to, yes, news outlets can be helpful. But again, you're showing me your credibility, your ethos by finding things that are credible, by finding experts, studies, scientists, you know, uh, you name it, that are in that field. Detailed and research articles that explain a solution. Please don't look for a blog site that's by, you know, a no-name person that just has a paragraph saying this strategy will solve this problem and it's five sentences. That won't be helpful because you need a lot of detail to say why would your solution work? Why should the people in Miami listen to you? So please look for something that's expansive and written by a credible source. Then finally, consider how you can adapt a foreign issue to a US food issue, particularly for Miami. So again, if you find an issue that worked particularly well to eradicate food deserts in New Delhi, India, uh, you need to figure out how that work in Miami, Florida, because it's not the same location, not the same population. Uh, we have different money, we have different uh, economic sources, we have different cultural obstacles. Think of how you would evaluate that, right? So those are, those are brainstorming parts and some requirements. The organization of the essay you can find in chapter 13 of Alan Bacon. You'll see that there's five sections. Each section is one paragraph. Uh, and each one of these boxes not, uh, writes out what you need to write. So particularly in the, in the introduction, you need to write the synthesis question and what's the hook. You also need to present your thesis, which would map out your main analysis and synthesis points. Then in the middle here, you're going to talk about each source. You're going to summarize it, analyze it, summarize the second one, analyze it, then do a synthesis section. So bring them both together and then you conclude and you talk about your solution, right? So this is the organization we're going to use. Think of this as a checklist. Make sure you cover them and I'll get more into the details later on in the middle paragraphs. But this is what you can find in chapter 13. There's also a model essay in there you can read in case you need more help. Uh, moving to the requirements section. So uh, you also have a few requirements. As always, follow academic writing rules. We've been talking about that. Use the right format. You're going to need direct quotes, particularly in the body paragraphs where you talk about each article. You're going to need at least two direct quotes, one quote from each source. So note that that's listed there as a requirement. Your essay must conform to Emily's citation and have a works cited page. I've assigned you to watch how to write a works cited page because you do need one for this essay. That video will be provided to you in one of the folders. Follow the organization that we just saw in the chart above. Final drafts will be four to five pages double spaced. Uh, of course, if, they, if you turn something in late, there'll be a deduction in your grade. Please make sure your essay is proofread, right? We've been talking about that. Use Grammarly, use your spell checker. And it goes without saying, please do not plagiarize. I know there's a lot of chance, there's a lot of chance that people will plagiarize because they're using outside sources. But I ask you, please, don't just simply take someone else's work and write it as yours because that's not yours. Uh, it'll be picked up and you don't want to get a bad grade for your final essay and then jeopardize passing the class. So please, if you need help, talk to me, talk to a librarian, talk to a tutor. We're all here for you to succeed. Okay, so that's what we have for the prompt. Now, if we wanted to start thinking about what we want to think for our topic, right? Let's say we needed a little bit of a brainstorm. We also have research links down here. Before you just jump on Google and look for whatever you want to look for, use these research links that I provided you to help you figure out what your topic is going to be. Now, you see you'll have MDC Library Search. That's the school's library. You can look for books, videos, articles, newspapers, everything like that that we have provided. You can look from the comfort of your home. Then Google Scholar, and then I have these food justice and government sites, food justice and community gardens. Further from there, you have food outside sources. I found about climate change and diet in case that's the topic you're, you're looking at. I've provided you already with some sample um, articles you can maybe look at and use. Now, let's just say we wanna know what's going on with something that we're looking at. Instead of just Googling it, what I did was go to Google News. Let's see what's current. What's the topic that's going on right now so I can find possible solutions that are current as well. And I typed in food, COVID-19 and kids because I want to focus on not just COVID-19 and food, but maybe how's it affecting children, right? Uh, and the first one here says, all right, there's a couple of organizations that are allocating money to provide children food because they need it because schools are closed. Uh, another food program in Texas, how the coronavirus pandemic will affect children in the long term. This would be an interesting article to read to see what are the long term um, effects, right? Um, so you can see that there's various issues that are happening here um, and related to kids COVID-19. Now, if I went to my first 
link right that's listed here my MDC library search you'll pop up to this site you type in exactly what you want you'll notice I put plus signs because when it goes into the search engine I want it to look for these three words combined right so it could be different for you whatever you want to search I hit search and I'll find what the library has for me and that can range from DVDs to articles to books to news articles all that kind of stuff on the left hand side here you want to make sure that you click on what you'd like to see so academic journals are great magazines okay news all right books fantastic there's only two though publication year down here you can see it says 2020 we're in luck because the issue that we're related to COVID-19 is happening right now uh, and so let's say I want to look at academic journals I want to see what the academic community is writing about this well my first result here is all about ensuring availability of food for children for child nutrition amidst the COVID-19 pandemic right the author is listed the year it's made uh, the summary, which is good to read before, if you read the summary, you'll know exactly what's going on. Now, for example, this one is all about India, what they did in India. It's not the United States, it's not Florida, but maybe we could read through it and find something that's helpful to us and use as a solution, right? We can adapt it to our city and use it. So what you do is click full text right here, and then it says ask you to log in. This is super easy because all you got to do is use your student ID number. It's the, it's the student ID number, and when it asks for password, it asks for you to, to just uh, use the last four numbers to log in. So it's your student ID number when it says what's your uh, username, and then for password, it's the last four of your, of your student number, right? So you can click on full text, and the PDF should come up for you. And you can read through it, see if it works out. This might be a little bit harder to read because it is a scholarly article, and it is a little bit more for that community, but... I believe in you guys. You can look through it, see if there's something helpful. Always look for the link that says PDF. Sometimes it takes a while to click through and to get into it, but you can read through it. The summary will tell you exactly what's going on. There's acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus, and it tells you what they're doing to help the children out food-wise. So you can read through that. Maybe you find a great answer in there somewhere that you can say, okay, this looks like a solution that I could use. So that's using the Miami-Dade website. You can, of course, put in whatever you want to look for here and and bam, you'll have your um, articles and, and whatnot. Another one that I provided for you is from Google Scholar. It's in the research links folder. Again, I typed in the same key terms, and this is a great article here in case you're interested in this topic. So feeding low-income children during the COVID-19 pandemic. This is from the New England Journal of Medicine, a highly regarded journal. Um, so again, if you see these little links here on the right, you're able to read it because of your library access. If you wanna look at this one, you can't because it's not linked up. But if you do, just go ahead and click into it and they'll send you to that article. This is a fantastic one as I noted before. Very credible, very recent. You have, of course, PhDs listed here and they're talking about what to do to feed low-income children. So this would be something that I would definitely use if I was doing this essay, I would use this, this one, right? So then finally, of course, I'd say your last thing, please try Google later on at the very end. I did that and I found that same article from the New England Journal of Medicine. Then I found a .gov, another .gov, another .gov. These are all good signs. These could probably help me all out. These are great solutions already. .org, great. UNICEF.org, great. .org, FEMA.gov, all these are great. My FL Families, okay, it's Florida Department of Children, so that still works out. All those are credible sources. All right, so those would all help me out. Now, the last thing I want you guys to look at is in that same week four folder, you'll see that there's a sample essay at the very end of that folder, sample synthesis essay. You can click into that and you'll get to a former student's work. They had to do a synthesis essay. It wasn't about food, but it was about climate change and sustainability. They chose to write about Major League Soccer, how they can make that league more sustainable and help uh, reduce their impact with climate change. So although this is different, it's very much the same model that you would use for your own essay. And I think it's helpful because if I just gave you one on food, sometimes people are just apt to just copy it and use their own. But this one's about climate change and major league soccer. You'll see that much of what's written here, <coughs> excuse me, is the same as the inverted pyramid. So you have the top, right? This is the issue. They talk about the issue. They talk about climate change how Major League Soccer is generating 
uh, an issue of, of, of adding carbon, of adding food waste, of using a lot of energy. How can we solve that? Well, they talk about their sources. So you'll notice that there's two sources listed here. They talk about the author, the article, and the argument, right? And they repeat that to show the next author, article, and argument. So they talk about that, and then ultimately you have your thesis, the same way that stated here. So here their thesis says, MLS stadiums can ultimately alleviate the environmental impact on our planet by using natural resources more efficiently and switching to zero waste models. You could of course just substitute this with saying, uh, for Miami to solve the COVID-19 food scarcity issue, the city can do X and the city can do Y. So you'll notice that this would be your roadmap. This would be the first body paragraph, an article, this would be the second body paragraph, an article. So it's very much the same thing you did in essay one. It's using the inverted pyramid to talk about the issue, then your key text, and then of course your thesis. So look through this, use that as a model to write your introduction. We'll talk more about how to do the middle the middle uh, essays, I'm sorry, the paragraphs in a, in, in a later video. So, okay, hope that you have some kind of food issue that you're really psyched about that you wanna write about. Uh, if not, we can talk about it. Maybe shoot me an email, say, hey, is this one possible? Can I do this one? I'll approve it. You're good to go. You can also talk to a librarian. On the side of Blackboard, you have the li Ask a Librarian link. You can click on that. You can set up an appointment to speak to a librarian, perhaps to help you do some research. You can talk to the tutors. They can also help you with that. So uh, I'm excited to hear what you all have to write about. I hope that this helped you figure out your idea or maybe get you brainstorming. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Keep growing your plants and fruits, and I'll see you guys then.